the air you breathe and the lord wakes you up every morning when you sleep at night you don't know where you are and it is the mercy of the lord you're sleeping and waking up if the lord is giving you bread to eat and water to drink and is nourishing you and making you to grow if the lord is protecting you from all the unseen evils in all the earth and you're part of the inhabitants of this world and in him we move and we live and we have our being if you are a person dwelling in this house of the Lord, in this place of the Lord, because it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and then it's giving you all that chance. What are you to do? You are to fear the Lord, all the inhabitants of the earth. We're looking at Psalm, Psalm 33, Psalm 33 verse 8. Let all the earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world fear, stand in awe of him. Number 7, every man every man without exception you and i you and your brother you and your wife you and your husband you and your children and you and your parents you and your neighbors you and your brothers and sisters everyone on the face of the earth every man is commanded to fear god the lord most high we're looking at ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter Fear God and keep His commandments. Fear God. When you fear God, what will that translate to in your life? You'll keep His commandments. If you really fear God, if you want to honor God, and if you respect God so much, you're going to keep the commandments of the Lord. It says, fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil and let's come to the new testament now in second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting what Perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. Pick up that word. Perfecting holiness. By the way, oh, what's that holiness? And it says you're perfecting it. You're improving on it. You're increasing in it. You're maturing in that holiness. Perfecting holiness in what? In the fear of God. I want to tell you tonight the components of that holiness that were to perfect in the fear of God. H is for humility. We're to keep on perfecting humility, increasing in humility, maturing in humility, walking in humility, rejoicing in humility, and moving on and on in humility in the fear of God. We're looking at Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, and Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. How important is humility? Perfecting humility, increasing in humility, all the days of your life in the fear of God. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. He humbled himself and became obedient. When it says, perfecting holiness and the fear of God, perfecting humility, 
in the fear of God. And the reason why you are humble, the reason why you are lowly, the reason why you are meek is because it's a component, it's part of holiness. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without humility, no one shall see the Lord. Except ye be converted and become as one of these little children. Ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now it says, and be found in fashion. As a man, he humbled himself and became what? Tell me. Obedient. Now, the next component of that holiness is obedience. And when it, mean, when it says perfecting holiness in the fear of God, it means perfecting obedience in the fear of God. Without obedience, what is holiness? If there's no obedience, obedience to the word of the Lord, keeping the word of the Lord. How can a man say, I'm holy, and there's no obedience in his life? How can a man say, I'm holy, and it's not obeying God, not obeying the commandments of God? But we're talking about fear. Is there obedience or fear? Look at it. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 13 and reading from verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. In the same verse, fear him, obey his voice. Obey his voice and fear him. Perfecting obedience in the fear of God. You'll see how the, how the Lord joins all these things together. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, 1 Samuel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice. You see that? If you will fear the Lord and obey his voice. If you will fear the Lord and obey his voice. Which means then, as we say we're perfecting holiness and the fear of God, we're perfecting, we're increasing our obedience and the fear of the Lord. In First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. As obedient children, you see that? Obedient children. When you come into the kingdom of God, you become a child of God. The fear of God we're talking about is a fear that makes you, number one, humble, perfecting humility in the fear of the Lord, and perfecting obedience in the fear of the Lord. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am, am what? I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges, every, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here, how? In fear. You see that? Obedience, verse 14, it goes on to the holy life and then concludes with fear. That means then you're perfecting holiness in the fear of God, you're perfecting humility, and you're perfecting also obedience in the fear of the Lord. L, the component of L is love. Love. Now, this is another thing that you know many people do not understand. And many people do not want to understand that when you love God, then you fear Him. And that actually, those two things are joined together, you know. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm reading to you from verse 12 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. It says in verse 12, And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and then to do what? And to love him. You see this. It says it's to fear the Lord your God and then it moves on to obeying the word of God and then to love him. And so if in your mind you have been thinking, I'm just going to love the Lord, I'm not going to fear the Lord. You see that you're not scriptural. You are standing on one leg. 
and the wind of human nature will pull you down, will, will just push you down. But when you stand on both legs, it says, fear the Lord and love him. And so you're perfecting love in the fear of the Lord. You're yielding yourself to the Lord more and more, and you love him. And then he tells us in Psalm 97 verse 10. Psalm 97, I'm reading to you from verse 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. That's the love. That's the law. When it says perfecting holiness and the fear of God, it means, you know, there are some evil things in the world. A character. Evil in morals. Evil in the society. And because you love the Lord as a component of your holiness, the things that are of the world and the things that will pollute you and defile you and corrupt you, you hate them. And you're perfecting that hatred that today you hate the things of the world more than many years ago. The pollutions and the corruptions and the evil and the things of the world, you hate them today more than you ever did because you're increasing in that love of God. It says, ye that love the Lord hate evil, you will hate evil. He preserved the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked, he will deliver you. The eye there is integrity. Integrity means you stand like a capital I. The wind will blow. The pain might rack your body. The persecution might come from every direction. And the deprivation from the people of the world might come. And there may be adverse circumstances beating against your life. You stand firm like a capital I, like they say, the rock of Gibraltar. And you do not allow anything to move you away from your commitment and consecration to the Lord. That's integrity. And that integrity is part of holiness. And you are to perfect that integrity in the fear of the Lord. In Job chapter 2, Job chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 3. Job chapter 2, verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, an upright man, one that, does what? Feareth God. That is it. One that feareth God, and then, and is true as evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Can you see those two things together? He feareth God and he is holding on to his integrity. And then the Lord said, Although thou moves me against him to destroy him without cause, the pain came, the sickness came, the boils came all over the body, the accusations came, every negative thing in the land came against his life. But he said, I'm going to hold on to my integrity. In fact, the integrity was challenged in verse 9. In verse 9, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Look at everything that has happened. All the reverses of life, they have come to you. Are you still holding on to your integrity? Because God and I, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh, what shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. He held on to his integrity. That's holiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting integrity in the fear of God. That whatever the pain, Whatever the persecution, whatever the circumstance, and whatever the reverses of life, job or no job, child or no child, marriage or no marriage yet, accommodation or no accommodation, friends or foe, whatever the winds of circumstance may beat at you, Holding on to your integrity. That's the holiness we're talking about. 
that whatever may be happening, you're still standing like Job's church. And the grace that God gave him, God will give you that grace. N is for the new nature. Perfecting holiness, perfecting the new nature. Improving on the new nature. Increasing that new nature. Strengthening that new nature. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting the new nature in the fear of God. That is holiness. That every time you wake up in the morning, I'm a new creature. I mean, I have new nature in me. And whatever may happen today, whatever friends may do, and whatever enemies may do, this new nature in me will come out brighter today. Perfecting holiness, perfecting the new nature in the fear of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 24. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24, it says, And ye put on the new man, that's the new nature, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It tells us in Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, we're looking at verses 3 and 4, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. That new nature is the nature of holiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God is perfecting the new nature in the fear of God. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. E is for endurance. Uh, you know, in this life, as you go through life, holiness is enduring. Holiness is enduring. You see many people backsliding. Holiness is enduring. Enduring to the age. And you see many people compromising. Holiness is enduring. And saying, yes, I know why they are running away. I know why they are compromising. I know why they are kind of changing their principles. But holiness is enduring. I'm going to endure to the very end. I know why their love is waxing cold. I know what they say they are facing. I'm facing that too, but I'm going to endure. Holiness is enduring. We're looking at Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. It says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What does it mean? Perfecting holiness. In the fear of the Lord, perfecting endurance, perfecting endurance, and perfecting endurance. This thing is coming at me today. There will be no complaint. Today, there will be no murmuring. Today, there will be no canal comparison. Why is this happening to me and it's not happening to other people? I'm perfecting endurance. You know, you used to, maybe you used to endure, but a lot of grumbling within, a lot of complaint within, a lot of wishing it were not like this, but now you are perfecting endurance and the fear of the Lord. And therefore, those things are happening and not, there's no disturbance inside your heart now. You are not moved at all. You say, I'm holding on to my integrity. I'm going to endure to the very end. And my endurance will not be, I'm just sitting there gritting my teeth and almost cursing the people in my heart. But now you love them while you're enduring. And you appreciate the good things of the Lord while you're enduring. Perfecting endurance in the fear of the Lord. And that's perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. And then as the submission, submission. And now you're bent low before the Lord. You're yielding to the Lord. You're perfecting holiness. You're perfecting submission. Oh Lord, thy will be done. I don't understand this. If I wish, I would have wanted you to take this cup away from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. A Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. That will of God to be done on earth may be inconvenient for me. I'm perfecting submission in the fear of 
the Lord. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God is perfecting submission in the fear of the Lord. But you know, if something is happening, no, I don't like this, I don't want this, why should it be like this? I'm going to do this and do that until this church will change this thing. If it was on my head, they're going to change this. I don't care whether they break my head, this thing will change. You're not perfecting holiness, you're perfecting evil. You're maturing evil. You're increasing in evil. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God is perfecting submission in the fear of the Lord. You're not doing that because of any man, because of so and so, because of such and such, because of my fear for God, because of my honor for God. I'm perfecting holiness and perfecting submission in the fear of the Lord. We're looking at Romans chapter 6 and we're looking at verse 13. Romans chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. That's submission. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Submission, submission, and you're perfecting that submission. And your submission today is better than your submission last year. Your submission this year is better than your submission 10 years ago. Your humility, your meekness, your surrender this time is better than your submission and yieldedness in years gone by. Because you are perfecting holiness and perfecting submission in the fear of the Lord. In James chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. James chapter 4 verse 7, submit yourselves therefore unto God. That's submission. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. And now the last is self-denial. The components of holiness, humility. Obedience, love, integrity, a new nature, endurance, submission, and then self-denial. And when it says you perfect holiness, it means you take all these components one by one in your life. And then you are increasing in them. You are maturing in them. You are perfecting them. You are brightening them, making them brighter to shine more and more unto the perfect day in your life. Self-denial, we're looking at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Here it says, and he and he said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Self denial. Let him deny himself and take up his cross. How often? Daily. And follow me. And then you're asking yourself, Can I deny myself today of 